Yo, Elliot, I'm 21 years old in Las Vegas, Nevada, living with my 19 year old fiance turning 20 soon. We've been together for two years and moved out for one and a half already. One bedroom apartment and two dogs. One of them is a French bulldog who's pregnant. Currently, I have a decent at home position full time from 830 to five. And I work at Target part time closing shift from six to 12 p.m. She has a nice marketing job as well. He says, I don't work Target every single day, but I had to pick up an extra job to start saving extra money. My partner is pregnant. Keep in mind, we have already lost a baby due to miscarriage, so that this one is definitely feeling special. This would be our first child. I plan on building an online brand for myself, uh, as you are a huge inspiration to me and many other kings. I've already had uh, my YouTube going. Honestly, I guess I just want some expectant dad advice. I love this woman. I am with, and every intention of mine is to raise a family with her. Uh, although I, it could be a little frightening, I'm more excited than any other emotion. Well, I want to congratulate you. I think it's an amazing thing. I think it's great that you're young and that you're getting married young. I think that that benefits us in a, in, in a lot of different ways, especially if it's in a rightly ordered family. And that is one that will work, right? A family that will work because both men and women know their, know their roles. One thing I, you know, we words are weapons, and, and our language has become weaponized against us. And without really knowing it, we take on the language of the subverters. And so there are a few things I just want to point out to you because they may, to me, they're kind of like red flags uh, about you that I, that I think just needs to be addressed uh, through your language. You say that my partner is pregnant, right? Well, the word partner is, comes from homosexuals. The word partner has been introduced into the language as a way to depolarize and desacralize relationships. In other words, we can substitute the word partner for husband, wife, or any other permutation that the postmodern world has created. You also call her your fiance. And that I understand that. That's fine. That's sort of traditional. Also, I don't like that word. I don't like either of those words. I'm going to make a distinction right here for you and for all the men in this program so you know how to speak to me <laughs> at least about it, right? And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to dictate your life or tell you what to do, but to get on, the, to, to adopt the perspective that I have that works for me, and I assume it'll work for you because you're a man also, is to think in these terms. She's your wife. She's not your partner. There's a grave distinction between that. If she was a man, she'd be your partner, but she's a, a woman, so she's your wife, right? So start referring to her as that. I don't even like that word fiance, like I said before, because in my estimation, a man who's been living with a woman for almost two years, you've been with her for two years, I'm sure you're having sex with her, that's why she's pregnant. Um, she is your wife. Whether or not you've made a formal agreement with the government, because that's really what it boils down to in our day and age, uh, she is your wife. And even the government will recognize her as your wife anyway, because they have these common law uh, rules. And then also she's, she's one flesh with you through this child. Uh, the state is going to recognize you as married and you are responsible. Although the state doesn't recognize your authority, it will recognize your responsibility uh, towards this woman and towards this baby. So let's just start using that language, right? There's no more partners. We're not partners. Right, that's for homosexuals, and I'm not. This is not about knocking homosexuals. They do whatever they want, right? In a way, I kind of just back off. All right, but we we don't use their language. It's not we're not to use that language, that weaponized language. A woman, you're sleeping with. A woman that's having your baby. A woman that lives in your home is your wife, right? I think that's an important distinction to make. I'm I'm grateful for the fact that you are choosing to marry her, you say that she's your fiance. And I think that's a good thing. I think it's a good thing because even for the child, I think that for a child to be raised on a solid foundation, knowing that mommy and daddy truly are one body, have made that commitment and will not be breaking up, right? I don't believe in divorce. I, 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 once you become one flesh, you cannot be anything else, really. All these people who marry and then divorce don't realize they're 
they're they're ad they're adulterers because you are actually one with the one that you've been with, right? Especially after you know two years, this woman is yours and she's and you're hers, right? You guys are one flesh and you're making a baby. So before giving, I guess, dad advice, expecting dad advice, it's, it really has to be husband advice, right? Because there is no dad without a husband, right? Right, and that's again, that's coming from my perspective here, because there's a lot of fornicators, a lot of babies born out of wedlock, seems to be the majority today. So I'm I'm speaking from a retrograded position, right? Like we've been talking about, right? I'm the true progressive. This these the ideas I propound are truly progressive because they're bringing us back to what works, uh, as opposed to the the progress that, that weaponizes the language and turns, you know husband and wife into homosexual partners. And here's the other thing too, because of the, because of feminism and because of the depolarization of the genders, right? That's another word that's weaponized. I like to say sexes. Because of the depolarization of the sexes, this word partner, it becomes prevalent. And men and women then believe that it, there is somehow more respectful to call your wife, your partner. She's not your partner. You're the CEO, you're the president, she's the vice president. You're the CEO, she's the CFO, right? At least that's how it is in my, in my, my life, in my family, with my wife. And as it was prescribed divinely through the Bible and as, as was practiced throughout the foundation and majority of Western civilization, Christendom, patriarchy, right? These are the things that are, our saving grace is going to be going back to tradition, right? And like our friend said earlier before, tradition saves us from the scourge of novelty, right? Chasing down novelty. And so we don't need novelty, we need tradition, right? We need to conserve traditions. And so I see you making, I see you making uh, effort in that direction. And, and I acknowledge you, I'm just giving you a little, you know, a few little things to consider as well. Now, so husband and wife, man and woman, building a family, and now you have a baby on the way. So one of the pieces of advice that I wish someone gave blue pilled, effeminate <laughs> Elliot, when I was having my first child, right? My first children, nobody, I didn't know this, right? I was definitely a beta male. There was no question about it. I think about my, my attitude, my thoughts and my ways of being back when I was your age, right? I was about 23 when I got married and, and had my first child. And I wish someone would have told me that when a woman is pregnant, when your wife becomes pregnant, her energy justifiably so turns inward. Women are, are naturally a little bit more uh, selfish than men for good reason, right? They've got to preserve themselves in a world where they are more vulnerable, right? They've got to protect themselves and their offspring. Babies come from their flesh. And so they've got to be, they're, they're a little bit more, they're a little, little bit more uh, um, protective in that way. And so when a woman becomes pregnant, that's almost turned up a little bit more, not totally, but it's turned up a little bit more because now the world revolves around her and the baby that's growing inside her. And there's a tendency in our culture to, of course, you know, put that woman uh, on a, on a, like a, um, on a sick bed, right? Almost like, uh, like there's, there's, like there's some medical condition that needs to be considered, almost like she has a disease, right? We've medicalized uh, pregnancy. And so as a re result, everybody else attention is surrounding the woman, right? So all of her attention is turned into herself. It's kind of being taken away from you a little bit. Your job now is very different than it was when it was just the two of you, your dogs and your boning. Um, and the whole world is going to turn towards her, right? You're going to, you're going to go places and you're going to see family and they're going to be like, how's your wife? How's she doing? How's she feeling? Right? Medicalized. How's she feeling? How's everything? And it, the whole conversation is going to be about her. And when I was a beta male and I didn't understand, I was a little confused, a little confounded. I didn't understand. And I noticed that my wife was, I don't want to say losing interest in me, but our relationship just wasn't the same because she was pregnant. What you got to understand is just a season. It's just a season. And sure enough, she's going to come back. Once the baby is born, once she, the baby's been weaned, 
This is important. This is another piece of dad advice that I would offer you. Have natural childbirth. Encourage your wife to have natural childbirth. Encourage her to eat well, take care of her body, continue to exercise while she's pregnant, and look into it. If you can, I would totally try to stay out of the hospital, especially during these times. There's no place in the hospital for healthy people right now because you're asking for problems. Uh, I would see if you could have a home birth. Look into home birthing. This is what Colleen and I did, right? Through my leadership, I suggested that we do home birthing. And so we did home birthing. I caught three of my children. I was there, actually, in fact, I was there by myself when my third daughter was born. I just, I was there. I caught the baby, right? And I held the baby. I waited for the midwife to come and then she did everything she needed to do. But I, she was encouraging me over the phone. So I had, we had a midwife. She was encouraging me over the phone and I, you know, I was doing, I did everything I had to do. My wife trusted me. We did it. We did it. We did it together. I think that's a, I think that's a beautiful thing. I think that's something that we need to consider a little bit more instead of, you know, the medical, uh, medical establishments, uh, um, um, grip on pregnancy, right? Not to say that there aren't times when someone needs to go to hospital. There are, but I would encourage you to look into and to consider home birthing. I would also uh, encourage you to lead her to nursing the child with her body, right? It's a challenge. It's difficult, especially if she thinks she's going to go back to her job and she's going to be a high powered career woman. Uh, you may want to have a conversation with her about, well, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe you don't need to work right now. Maybe you need to be a mom. Maybe you need to nurse the child, right? My wife nursed my daughter, my first daughter, all through the night, right? There was... And I'm not knocking anybody. I'm just telling you the way it is for, has been for me. And, and, and I think the way I've done it is why it works. Uh, during those times, there was, there was none of this taking turns getting up with the baby. I had to sleep because I was working the next morning. And her prime responsibility as the birther was to take care of the baby, to nurse the baby. My wife would get up and nurse the baby all night long, right? I know a lot of guys in our, in our you know, fake egalitarian world are like, oh, Elliot, what are you, a caveman? Don't you know that real dads nurse babies? I'm like, well, you know, I don't think so. I think in a rightly ordered home, there is the mom that does mom things, and then there's the dad that does dad things. And so I would put that out there to you also. I would, as a, as a, as a, as a husband and as a father, your job is to create that safe space for her to flourish, for her and the baby to flourish under your mantle. And so you do everything that you can to protect that so that she can do that. And the way that happens and vice versa, she does that so that you can protect, provide and work, right? That is, you know, it's so funny that in Genesis, in the Bible, after Adam and Eve have fallen, God kind of like prescribes for us what we are going to experience in the coming generations as a fallen people. And one of them is that uh, men, it's your curse. This is so weird. It's your curse to now work by the sweat of your brow and every day you'll have to toil for what you want, right? That's the man's curse. The woman's curse will be now you will labor in childbirth and your desire will be for your husband, but he will lord over you i don't remember exactly what he says but he will be your leader and so women they resist that they hate that the idea that well childbirth is oppressive motherhood is oppressive and husbands are oppressive this is what feminists say anyway uh, uh, husbands are oppressive so what they end up doing is they cast aside well they really can't but they endure their own their suffering and then endure a man's suffering by working by the sweat of their brow so feminism has duped women into taking on two curses, <laughs> right? How crazy is that? Feminism has taught women that you now need to go and live by the sweat of your brow like a man does. And so rather than receiving her place, being in her place and doing the best that she can, what she has, a lot of women try to take on both. And you know what that leads to? It doesn't, it doesn't work out really well. She's usually stressed out, becomes masculine and masculine and the man becomes emasculated and the whole thing just kind of like goes to shit because well feminism has, has has lied has lied essentially to men and women and so men don't even know their place either and i'm telling you that your place is to create the safe space and hers is to nurture within that space 
really important that we know this is another one that I'll put out there to you as you know as, as a rule for families is know your role and play your part be very clear very clear with my wife and I look I wasn't red pilled I didn't get red pilled until I was in my 30s right I didn't know a lot of this stuff right I was like I said I was a blue pill beta beta when I was uh when I, early in my marriage, but I had, I think it was latent within me because I had an alpha male dad. So I kind of, there was parts of me that I struggled and there were things I knew, but I was like, no, that's not right. Right. Because of, I, not only did I came from my father, but I was raised in this gynocentric culture. So, but the, but the, but the, the stronger part of me prevailed in that when Colleen first got pregnant, you know, way back in 2003 or whatever, uh, we agreed that it's best for her to stay home. And then I was going to do everything I could do in my power to provide for her and for them. And my life was not easy at that time. I was a, I was a personal trainer earning, you know, $10 an hour or something like that at a gym in Long Island, right? You're, you're probably in a better situation, a better place than I was at that time. So these are just a few things I would have you consider, you know, number one, that, you know, your, your, your wife, when she's pregnant is going to be a different woman. If I could boil it down to that, I would say she's going to be a different woman and it's okay. And not only that, she's going to come back and she's going to come back better. This is what I noticed with my wife, right? My wife was a particular woman before having children and I liked her. I liked her a lot. She was great. It was awesome. We had a great time together. Then she had children and she got better. <laughs> right? She got better. She matured in her responsibility towards the family. But as a result of giving herself selflessly to the children, she also now opened space for she and I to, uh, to almost rekindle our, I don't want to say lost romance, but our, our, our strained romance while the children were being born. And uh, I've said this before in other videos that I'm grateful that I was responsible as an early, in my early 20s. I was making babies like he was making babies in my early 20s, right? We had, by the time I was, I think 27 or 28, we had our last child. So I was, we were just banging out children all through, my, all through my 20s. After all of them were born, then my wife and I all of a sudden like went through a second courtship we started dating again, right? But when the kids were coming, we weren't, right? We were just, I was, and I was, I'm not complaining. I was working my face off. I was at the gym from, you know, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., seven days a week, right? She was with the baby, nursing the baby, waking up with the baby, caring for the baby all day long. I didn't change that many diapers. I wanted to change a few diapers. Like, I, I, I genuinely wanted to do that. So when I was home from time to time, I'd say, oh, let me try, right? Let me do that. By the time my fourth child came, I basically stopped changing diapers altogether because, there were other children that could have used my attention. There was much more work to do at that time. So my wife changed all the diapers, right? So once all that season's over, once that season was completely over, we had a, like a second romance. We started dating. We started going out to dinner every week. We started going to clubs and bars, right? I, I was kind of partying it up in 2015, right? It's kind of where I started to lose myself. 2015, 2016, we did what all our friends did in their 20s we did it in our 30s and it was much better in our 30s because our life was was well established right we were doing really well at that time and we could we could kind of relax the reins a little bit and so i know that i'm talking about a lot of different things here all at once but just giving you some ideas that might support you in your in the raising of your new family i'm i'm grateful for you i'm happy for you and i pray that everything works out for you and your wife and that you have a long long life together, your family stays together, and you raise very healthy, respectful, beautiful children that go on to see this world return to the father, and it'll be up to you as a father. All right, so hope that helps, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram 
and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.